and welcome to Just One More Watch. Always nice for me and therefore I hope by extension for you to have a look at something that looks like nothing else that I've reviewed on the channel so far. And I think this Dorenzo certainly fits that bill. It looks like nothing else that I have ever seen. Now the owner and designer Sergio Dorenzo claims that he got inspiration for this piece from the outrageous curves of 1930s Bugatti cars and who am I to argue? But I think that there are other forces at work here today. Forces that are out of this world. Let's flip the camera and go back to the future. So as is the custom, before I get into the box, let's have a quick look at the Kickstarter campaign. As noted in the intro, the DRZ02 has smashed its target, fully funded in three minutes, well over 100 grand pledged, and continuing to grow by the day. Plenty of time left if you want to get into this one. Now, there are a number of different options available. There are three or four different dial colors, and there's two different case finishes. I suggest you have a good look at the campaign. Uh, you seem to be able to get all different dial colors in both different case finishes, which fundamentally changes the look of the watch. You can also pick this one up with a date or with a no date version. I've got a no date prototype to show you here today. So what's the price on this one? Well, there are still a few early bird specials left. The price on the early bird, you're gonna to have to do your own currency conversion. I work it out as about 520 US dollars, currently about 720 Aussie. Though if you find a friend or better still two friends that are also into picking up one of these each, then the price goes down further. So what do you get for your money then? Well, interestingly designed packaging, you get a nice cardboard outer and a proper smelly, genuine leather pouch for the watch and the bits and pieces that it comes with. There's a two year warranty card in there. As noted, this is a prototype though, so there are a few variations. You even get a little old school iron on patch for your denim jacket or uh, whatever else you so choose to iron it onto. But probably more important than the iron on patch, you get the watch and just have a look at the thing. I don't think this looks like anything else I've ever reviewed on the channel or even seen before as noted retro futuristic indeed and just a number of really nice very interesting little design touches and the magic words swiss made either side of the index at six o'clock so 41 millimeters in diameter 48 mil lug tip to lug tip as you can see no curvature to this case whatsoever three-piece case little upper bezel mid case and a screw down case back. Under 12 mil thick, because this one uses a Swiss movement. In the prototype, this is an ETA 2824, but it is gonna be replaced with the Salita 200 in the full production model. The Salita 200, of course, is a clone of the ETA 2824, so very, very similar indeed. 22 millimeter lug width, and weighed up on this original supplied leather strap, it comes in at 90 grams. 316 cell stainless steel case, crown, and that little mini bezel and the see-through case back, and it's a sapphire sandwich, so sapphire on the front, and it's a sapphire covering the display case back as well. Now, 50 meters of water resistance, However, it does come with a screw down crown. I wasn't necessarily expecting that when I first received the watch and went to, to give it a wind up. So screw down crown, not quite sure why, therefore it doesn't have a little more water resistance, but this style of watch, 50 meters is just fine. The design of the case then, retro futuristic, supposedly aping 1930s Bugattis. Although as noted, I see something a little bit different as well in here. That dial design, sandwich, those recesses, the circles, the lines, the dots, crop circles, crop circles. Was this watch designed by a being from another planet? The dial really is lovely. So it's a sandwich dial. As you can see, there's a kind of radial sunburst brushing on the inner, just Dorenzo automatic and that. Dorenzo logo, which itself looks like it should have been impressed in a field by UFOs. Swiss made either side of the six as noted. We've got a minute track all the way around the outside and fifth of a minute markers as well there and a really interesting handset. The dial though is curved, it's kind of bowl shape pushing all the way to the edges of the chapter ring there. Very unusual indeed. Curved hands, lovely curved hands, bit of loom on the end. I'll pop up a loom shot in a minute. And we've got a little loomed tip on that lollipop second hand also. And the finishing on the case is very nice. We've got a radial brushing around that smooth bezel there. 
nice bit of polish, nice chamfered edge there to the case and brushed on the lugs and on the side of the case. We've also got a nice, if it's slightly small crown, I guess they didn't want to go any larger, it would have altered the look of the watch overall. Again, with the Dorenzo logo there etched into the side. And the strap is a cracker, apparently handmade in Germany and vegetable tanned, natural leather. I've had that combination before, German vegetable tanned leather, and it smells outstanding. Definitely one of the nicest straps I've come across at the price. They're gonna sign the buckle for the production model, so don't worry about that. I believe there is also an option to add a Milanese for $20, branded Milanese, a bit of a no-brainer if you're into one of these, an alternative look for an extra 20. I'd definitely be specking that one on as well. So back to the Sapphire case back, and we'll have a look at the movement therein. Now this one, as noted, is an ETA 2824, but you can expect to see a very, very similar looking Salita 200 there on the production models, 26 jewels, hacked hand wind, four hertz movement featuring eight ticks per second of the second hand, roughly a 40 hour power reserve. It'll be pretty accurate, it'll be pretty reliable, but it will also cost you a pretty penny when it comes to service time, so do bear that in mind when you're buying this or any other watch containing a Swiss entry level movement. So the loom then, I wasn't expecting that, designed by little green men or what. Couple of different tones used. We've got a, a rich orange superluminova on the dial itself under that sandwich dial, and we've got a much paler superlume on the hour, minute, and second hands. Now the loom does vary depending on which of the case finishes, depending on which of the dials you choose, so be sure to check the Kickstarter campaign for more information on that. And there it is sitting on top of my seven inch wrist. I must admit when I got this one out of the packet, I thought how on earth is that one gonna wear? given that super flat case shape, no curvature at all. But it wears all right, actually. It's not a particularly big watch, 41 mil and 48 mil. And because it's also quite light at 90 grams, it does feel like a, a regular watch. You don't feel like you're wearing a bit of an oddity on your wrist, even though you are. Nice strap, as noted. Nice grain to that leather, and I wish you could smell how good the dead cow is. And there it is, zoomed out a little higher for perspective. You can see what that slightly unusual shape looks like sitting on top of my wrist. You can also see the sunburst in the center, the radio brushing catching the light in my studio quite nicely. And there it is outside in a nice and sunny, a very bright and sunny day here in Sydney today. You probably noticed the sandwich on the dial. You probably noticed the recesses more in natural light than you do in the studio lights. Indeed, they're so deep they cast their own little shadow, really adding to the, the depth on the dial, as does that bowl on the outer rim, the kind of curvature to the overall dial shape, and wears pretty nicely, as noted. Very nice finishing on the case. So what am I gonna complain about then? Well, not much, to be honest. The crown, as noted, a little bit small, a little bit fiddly to grip, and I don't know quite why it doesn't have 100 meters of water resistance given that it does have a screw down crown. That would have been nice, especially on the mesh bracelet that's an option that would have given it a bit of all round practicality, especially considering there's a bunch of loom on the dial. And the date option, this one doesn't feature a date, but check out how well they have integrated the date on the date model. I think that's just about perfect. Hidden beautifully up there at the six o'clock and they have color matched the date wheel. I think a, a great integration of a date function on a watch. And let's be honest, it's not gonna be to everyone's taste. Future retro isn't really gonna be everyone's cup of tea, but given that this one is already very well back, 220 plus backers, it certainly found its niche in the market. So there you have it then, the Dorenzo. Perhaps not a practical everyday timepiece, but I don't think that's the point of this one. It looks like nothing that I've ever seen before. Indeed, nothing on earth. Some really interesting color combinations and the best integration of a date window I think that I've seen on any watch. Thanks for watching, see you in the next one.